I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad to talk about Ryan Day yeah. visiting Clemson. Yeah, let's just let's just go there because I had no clue. I follow you, and so I happened to see this. Oh, Brian's going to talk about Ryan Day and Ohio State. He's going to pile on. Okay, here we go. And no, this was something that literally no one in the beat or in Columbus, Ohio, has reported. And yet, when you reported this, it's true. Ryan Day was in Clemson, South Carolina this week. Now, keep in mind, the players were on uh, spring break. break. And this was an interesting trip to Clemson, South Carolina, Brian. So go ahead and spill the beans for everybody. Because by now, people are wondering, like, wait a minute. What was our head coach doing in Clemson, South Carolina. Sure, sure. So, to tell you how I found out, uh, find out, blah, 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 can't speak, found out about it was uh, I was just looking uh, through various news outlets in this upstate of South Carolina area, trying to find out what's going on in spring practice. Is there injuries? Is there anyone who's doing better than what anyone expected? You know how it is. It's, we're, we're thirsty for college football right now. So, as I'm scrolling through an article, out of nowhere, just towards the bottom of the article, oh, by the way, Ryan Day was in Clemson, South Carolina with his son, RJ, touring the campus because RJ is, is a 2027 uh, uh, recruit. And then the article goes on. I'm, I'm sitting there going, how is, how is it that this is buried? Right. One of the top coaches in college football – is in Clemson, South Carolina. I mean, it's not like it's a couple of hundred miles away from Columbus. We're talking about Clemson. And he's here, and it's buried in an article. So I found that very, uh, very interesting. So, of course, uh, I created a video that said Ryan Day is spying on Clemson. That ruffled some feathers, of course, uh, it, just for the fun of it. And then, and, and then, of course, I took a shot at his beard. That He was in the upstate of South Carolina procuring beard oils. Uh, and then, of course, I, is, isn't that the same thing as tobacco juice? Actually, yes. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but uh, but uh, it, it but then, it, of course, I, I talked about him being in town. And what was interesting <clears throat> is a lot of Ohio State fans started commenting, going, this is fake news. This is a lie. Uh, why are you spreading this? This is ridiculous. And it got to the point that it started getting personal with some people. So I took the article that I shared with you and I just started posting it as a reply comment. And I said, scroll down. Boom. He's in Clemson, South Carolina. And, and I believe it was somewhere around Tuesday or Wednesday, somewhere in that time that he was in Clemson. I, I don't know that to be exact, uh, to, to be the exact date, but the article was written or posted on the 13th, which was what, Wednesday? So it was probably Tuesday uh, that, that he was in town. Interesting. Interesting. Now, there's two things right away I need to respond to. Number one, this week we lost our running backs coach. And if he's in Clemson, South Carolina with his son on a recruiting visit, which, at, you know, first off, that's his boy. He's a dad. He has every right to go there with his son. Okay. I'm not, I'm not questioning Ryan Day's loyalty at all there, but how interesting if he's not in the Woody Hayes athletic center, cause he's, he's doing this with his son on spring break, that that is the day that Tony Alford decides to, to cut cords and, and head to, to Ann Arbor. Uh, that to me is just the most betrayal cowardly, thing you could possibly do now i'm not saying that it's true but the timing of this is incredible that's the first thing the second thing and you know how my mind works guys i i have been wearing a tinfoil hat as an ohio state fan for a while now you all know that if this year doesn't go well for ryan day if if there is a fourth consecutive L hung on him by that team from the whore known as Ann Arbor, I can't help but wonder if Dabo Sweeney 
you know, while while RJ was getting a tour of the beautiful campus in Clemson, South Carolina, if Dabo Sweeney and Ryan Day didn't talk shop a little bit, could you see Ryan Day as the next offensive coordinator for Dabo Sweeney in Clemson, South Carolina, if there is a fourth consecutive loss to uh, that team up north and he gets the X here in Columbus, Ohio? Brian, what do you think? Yeah, as you could say, I'm kind of I'm I'm kind of contemplating this. Here's the reason why: uh, Clemson hired Garrett Riley, Lincoln Riley, Southern Cal's head coach, hired his brother. Um, the offense looked questionable this past year. Um, this is kind of chasing down another rabbit trail, but I promise I'll tie it back in here. Okay. Um, you know, a lot a lot of people when when you talk about Clemson not being the dominant team that they were for such a long time. They always go, what do they always say? It's the transfer portal. It's not the transfer portal. If it were the transfer portal, our defense would be terrible. Our defense is incredible. It's poor coaching on the offensive side of the football. Go, go do your research. Go behind me. Check, check what I'm saying. Before Matt Luke was hired, right after the end of the season, there was only one guy in there who had coached at, a, at another school other than Clemson, and his name was Garrett Riley. Everybody else had first-year coaching jobs. We have two guys on our offensive coaching staff. They played at Clemson. They played a few years in the NFL. Their very first coaching job, Clemson. He filled the room with inexperience, and it finally come home and bit him in the butt. On the defensive side of the ball, totally different. So he started firing a coach about once per year. And my thought is if Garrett Riley and, and the Riley brothers, they're, 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 they're opportunist. Someone comes along and dangles some money in front of them, they're gone. And I can't blame them for that. I'm not going to be a hypocrite here. I think Garrett Riley would bolt. I would not be shocked if maybe they did talk shop but I don't know that for sure. I, but I wouldn't be shocked. I would I would be disappointed if I were you in my head coach if he didn't talk shop and Ryan Day sitting there on his campus. That's how I would look at it, personally. Um, I mean, the jury's still out on Ryan Day as a head coach. We understand this. You know, there was the, you know, he's he's coaching with Urban Myers guys for a couple years. Now he's got his own guys and he's recruited very well, but the results at the end of the season have not been great. There is a ton of expectations being placed on day this season as, as Chris wrote an amazing article that will be posted in our, uh, oh boy, I don't want to, don't want to say that. Do I, Chris, we don't want that. To count well, let's back keep there. that one just a few more weeks before we let that one out of the bag. Okay. Um, the seat is on fire. Okay, and it's not because of anything he's done bad outside of the fact that at the end of the end of the season, he's just not scoring. You know, as one coach famously said, he was born on third base and well, he's kind of stuck on third base recently. So that being said, um, RJ, here's what's interesting to me. RJ's very young. He's only going into his sophomore year. He has two offers that I know of in Division I. One was the Boston College when Jeff Halfley was there, which, of course, was the defensive coordinator at Ohio State and good friends with Ryan Day. The other one is Marshall, and Marshall's not exactly, um, let's just say, a Power 5 school here, although they are pretty good for a group of five, and they're they're very close to Ohio, so they're right across the river. So it makes sense that they would be like, hey, let's let's offer Ryan's kid. Is there going to be an offer? like, Or is this more of like Dabo saying, let's get another famous kid on campus, a la Kirk Herbstreet's twin boys, so we can – so I can have more good good press, more, you know, that type of stuff. And if something happens, Ryan, guess what? Your boy's here already. Huh? Uh, I mean, I, Sweeney's done it before. Uh, in fact, a, a, a lot of the criticism of Dabo Sweeney 
and his lack of wanting to use the transfer portal has always come back to this. This is a this is a point that I have to agree with. Is that if you can give the Herb Street boys scholarships, Kirk, hey, listen, they're not going to play that much, if ever. They're going to do cleanup duty. And second of all, Kirk Herb Street can pay for his boys to go to Clemson, right? We don't have to waste scholarships. There's former players that we've wasted scholarships on. Uh, there's a local high school in the Clemson, South Carolina area, who, by the way, gave Clemson DeAndre Hopkins and Shaq Lawson and Jarvis Jenkins. So, and one of my one of my friends by association is the head coach of that team. So I'm not going to knock them. But if you live in the Clemson, South Carolina area, and the name Daniel High School comes up, people starts itching and start scratching. Why? <clears throat> Because Sweeney has given scholarships to guys that's come out of this high school because a lot of the coaches' sons, that the coaches at Clemson, has went to school there. But what's funny is he can give them scholarships and preferred walk-on status, therefore earning a scholarship later on, but he can't go into the portal and maybe get a few guys who might fill some holes until the prize recruits come in. I, I, I mean, I would not be shocked at this, guys. If maybe he's trying to lock in something, but I, 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 I can't dis, I can't uh, excuse that idea that maybe he he would uh, give Ryan Day maybe dangle a carrot. Yeah, I mean, hey, if Dabo Sweeney happened to have a son that you know was good at football, and he showed up in Columbus, Ohio, no, I'm not going to say no. We would we would all be saying he's he's. <laughs> <laughs> that he's he's been behind enemy lines and he's you know trying to grab our playbook and everything else. So, J, Jr. Chris, either you want to respond and ask Brian a question before he heads out. I know he's got to go here in a few minutes. Go ahead, Chris. No, I just you know I just find it very very interesting. But yeah. uh, you know I don't I don't know that if I'm Ryan Day, do I really want to go? coach with a guy who said that uh, right before I beat him, by the way, that I shouldn't have even been there because I was no better than 11. Come on. I, I would still be taking that. Per- well, of course, we know I take everything personally, but <laughs> I would still be taking that real personally. I wouldn't even let my kid go to a recruiting visit there. But, you know, I I understand it, you know, as far as Ryan Day, you know, he wants his kid to get have the opportunity and, you know, I just don't – I personally have never seen RJ play. Uh, I don't know what kind of player he is. Um, is he somebody that's going to end up being a, a, a you know, a four-star caliber kid? And if so, I, I can't imagine him going – Listen, he's I had can't every – going anywhere but where his dad's at if he's well, – you know, I don't if, know, man. Would you want to? Really got, oh, Sure. I, you know, if my dad was the guy, I would I would go play for him. Absolutely. That's a lot of. That is a lot of pressure, man. Oh, like a, to live up a lot to. Of pressure, you know. You know, like I understand if he's like, dude, I want to go blaze my own trail. I get it. But you know? but here's the it. other thing: if Ryan Day loses to that team up north again this season, and he's out because he will be out of coaching. Given the fact that that team up north is nothing more than a JV high school team right now with a bunch of wannabe coaches, uh, you know, I would run him out of the game of football. He better win this game. JR? I just, I, I, I can't see <clears throat> Ryan Day even thinking about options after he gets fired. The man seems like one of the most determined people that, you know, I've ever heard from and he seems like you know just no other option but to you know accomplish the goal type of deal which you know people can sit here and say well he didn't accomplish the goal the last three years which you know true that's fine um cheating happened but still you know we also need to be aware of that however um i I, even if it was gonna happen and brian can probably help me out here a little bit but i just i don't I don't see the fit, you know, Ryan day is a guy who's going to want to have his own kind of NFL style offense. To me, 
Uh, it looks like Dabo kind of has his offense. I mean, Tony Elliott ran it. Garrett Riley seems to be running it now. Am I correct in that, Brian? Garrett Riley's running Dabo's offense? That's what I heard. Wait, see, that's that's another conflicting uh, uh, subject in Clemson. Throughout the season, we were hearing that Sweeney was helping call plays. Newsflash. Dabo Sweeney was never a coordinator. He was a wide receiver coach. Mm -hmm. So when he was hired as the interim head coach, everybody was shocked that Terry Don Phillips hired a wide receiver coach to take over the team after Bowden was fired midseason. So with that said, people in Clemson get really finicky seeing Sweeney over there with a with a with a little uh, uh, play, play sheet. sheet. And, and I know that you're sitting there going, <laughs> well, a head coach can this and a head coach can that. Yes, a head coach can weigh in on the play calls. Dabo Swinney has left that to his his coordinators. And so the offense has fell off over the past few years. We all know this. All of college football knows this. And um and it look it looked really bad this past year. We could talk about the offensive line. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of layers to this, but um I just, I just don't know if Ryan Day would be a fit between their personalities because I could see Ryan Day looking at him saying, hey, you hired me to call the plays. What the heck are you doing trying to call plays? You don't call plays. I don't care if you are the head coach. Trust your hire, man. Because the, the offense, once again, people are saying in Clemson, he was calling plays. Other people were saying, oh, no, he wasn't calling plays. You know? Yeah. Uh, and I've always – felt like there is a similarity and I know Ohio State fans won't like me saying this but I've always felt like there's a similarity between Urban Meyer and Dabo Sweeney both Urban Meyer and Dabo Sweeney started out as wide receiver coaches now Dabo took over Clemson you know uh, Urban went to what was it Bowling Green uh, yeah. then to Utah and stuff like that so a little bit different career path there but <clears throat> I mean both of them are high energy high you know, emotion, get the most out of your players type of guy. But both of them kind of have, you know, from what I hear, both of them kind of have a hard time with hiring staff after their ace guys kind of move on. You know, I mean, that was one of the biggest things with Urban Meyer when he was at Florida was he couldn't keep bringing in the right staff because all his guys would leave for head coaching jobs or whatever else. And then at Ohio State, uh, you know, he hired Ryan Day, which is great, but you know, he did uh, struggle in a few different areas with some of his staff and just remaining, you know, emotionally intact, which I don't know if that's Dabo's issue. But, um, you know, Urban Meyer was never a play caller either. But if you listen to stories from guys like, you know, Kirk Barton and Zach Smith, Urban Meyer wanted to call plays and would try to at times. But then essentially, like you said, Brian, the offensive coordinator would say, hey, you hired me to do this. Let me do this type of deal. Um, and so that kind of just confirms my suspicion that there's more similarities between Urban Meyer and Dabo Sweeney than maybe we first thought, which who knows, maybe that's even more reason why Dabo might hire, uh, Ryan Day because, uh, Urban hired him. You might want to watch that reference there, JR, because I know, Urban's lobbing I know. to find you and treat you like a kicker and playing a foot where you don't want it. Let me tell you. I know. I, Ohio State fans won't like it. I'm not very vocal about it because I know they don't like it. But if you look at it, they're kind of similar. Oh, Although, shucks. Real, real quick, Brian. I mean, as far as that goes, um, do you feel that Dabo would be comfortable with Ryan Day on the sideline, given the fact that you say Dabo himself is on the hot seat right now? I mean, do you really want somebody who's got Ryan Day's record as a head coach being your offensive coordinator? That's not – it's not a bad record, brother. It's not. No, was, that's was, no, it's a good record. That's what I'm saying. Do you want that kind of pressure on you as a head coach? Because if you fall down, Ooh. you've got your replacement right beside you. That's a good question. I, I would also turn around and ask Ohio State fans – who do you have standing off in the shadows to take this guy's place? Yeah, he might have been born on third, but he has he might have been throwing the keys to the race car, but he hasn't wrecked the car. Correct. Who, who do we have in the shadows? I'll tell you, there's a guy up in Cleveland hanging out in the analyst room yeah. right now who I'm pretty sure is so, in the shadows. So this all stems from the fact that Mike Vrabel 
former Buckeye, former head coach Tennessee Titans, is in an analyst position in Cleveland, in Cleveland, Ohio. He could have jumped in several NFL positions, I believe, and several or taken college positions. Or taken the position at Wisconsin with his good friend Luke Fick when he did not. He came back to Ohio. So but yet you have Chip Kelly, obviously, which is Ryan's mentor, but and I saw Jar of Happiness threw out a really crazy theory about that one, which we might get to. But this was fun. I know you got to go, Brian. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell everybody where they can find a Clemson Football Live app. That is right. Well, thank you guys for having me on. Uh, yeah, Clemson Football Live on YouTube. Check us out. Drop in there. Talk some trash. We try to keep it civil, but talk some trash. Have a good time. Gentlemen, thanks for having me on. Yeah, uh, thank I'll, you so much. I, and, and by the way, if any more of your coaches wander down here and I find out about it, I'll let you know. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Christmas says thanks, Brian. Uh, so uh, awesome. Good to have you, man. Go check out his show. He is by far, I'm not I'm not tooting his own, by far the best Clemson YouTuber out there. And he, he and I both know John Kennedy. So there's the connection. So crazy connection at that. So take care, Brian. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you. Take ya. care, guys.